Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. I hope you're doing good today. In today's video, we're going to talk about metal and thundercats. Hold up. In today's video, we're going to talk about how that we can make us a metal thundercats coin. Like that right there. In previous video, I have shown y'all how did I use Mold Mix 60 high temperature silicone rubber to make my molds. And uh, y'all have seen some of them heat resistant silicone rubber compound. Like that right there. And also, I show y'all that I use the hot pot to melt it. I have been had questions about Craft Man. Do I need to get a $55 melting looking deal? Or can I just use some simpler things to melt my metals down with? I also going to need us something to make the mold out of. Craft man just had a little bit of mold putty left. So I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to try it and see. This really is for plastic res and epoxy thing like that. But the reason why I'm interested in this today is because this stuff right here carried about 30 minutes. So we can get some things moving. And then finally, we're going to need something to make a mold of. And for that, we're going to use Thundercats. Craft man, where did you get that Thundercats con from? I 3D printed it. See that right there? For the past three, four days, I have been filming a video all about resin-based 3D printer. Actually going to be reviewing not one, but two 3D printers. And this is my first time doing that kind of stuff. So I printed this thing and went ahead and just gave it a little few coats of uh, paint on it. And I said it would be like downtown to make us a little metal one of these, wouldn't it? What do y'all think about that? I'm not trying to offend nobody, but Thundercats is the best intro to any cartoon ever that there ever has been in the history of cartoons and mankind ever in the whole history of it. Timeline, if you really look at it, the best ever. And there's a part in the intro that still to this day give me chills when I hear it. Right though. That do give me some chills right though. Anyway, all right, I think we inspired, we're ready to go. We're going to take a little Thundercast car in right there. And then, anytime I'm handling a, a, a two-part mold putty like this right there, is I take one of them and use one hand. And then use my little left hand with this one. In the food industry, y'all might know, when you mix something with something else that ain't supposed to be cross-mixed, then uh, that's cross controversy right there. So, we got these two things. And we just want about the even little amount that we can do. And now, we want to put this where the thing need to be. And go with it. And you're just basically going to mix until evenly distribution. Until there ain't no streaks in it, thing like that. And you got to go kind of fast with it. All right. And if it don't work, then we'll just do something else, you know. Ain't the end of the world. And even if it was the end of the world, that might not be a bad thing, depending. You know what I'm saying? It's like my dad said, it ain't what you know, it's who you know. All right, crap, man, what are you talking about? All right, so we got the little Thundercats right there. What I like to do is to push this down into that. It's like on your first day of school, you want to make a good impression. You could just put the con down face up and then put the clay, uh, excuse me, to put it on top of it. But we're going to see. Hopefully it picks up them little details and things like that. So we're going to let that cure for about 30 minutes. And then while that's curing, I just figured, you know, I don't know. I could just show y'all some things. Instamatic. Classic space right there. 
I went ahead and upgraded the little light bulb of uh, Mick in case I'm an extra personality. And then I ain't never showed y'all this, but one day I made a little concrete free range chicken. You know, that broke right there. And then MC Hammerhead Hunter for bounties. Got him a little boom box now. See that? He carried that around with him. Y'all ever seen one of these little things? This is a puzzle. And what you got to do is get one of the little marbles in one side. And then carefully. Oh, snap. See that? And then let's see. Let's try it this way now. Oh, snap. That just ain't going to work, is it? Sometimes we try real hard and things don't fall into place. What can we do? There, right there. Every once in a while, the simple solution is the best solution. I downloaded this Thundercast logo off of Thingiverse.com. Once I download the STL file, I bring it into my little old school 3D editing software. Added me a little extra bevel and then did a little sweep on it. Extrude it on down. So that way when it prints, I get a little extra thicknessity to it. And by the way, I have ordered me a HDMI recorder that I can plug my uh, computer output right up into it and record in real time. And by the way, that little strobe strobe color looking. When them colors hit your eye like a uh, rainbow in the sky, that's called moray. See how oily that is? That's just that natural lubricity from the uh, silicon when it cures. Let's see there. That look pretty good to me. To be honest with you, I'm not sure how uh, this going to hold up. However, we're going to go ahead and try to see can we get at least one coin off of this. Before we pull the metal, we're going to use us some baby powder. I have used baby powder not only with metal, but plastic resin, you can use powder inside your mold will help to eliminate surface bubbles. Did y'all know that? And uh, help with that surface tension, the things like that. Scientific looking. So, uh, you also could use arrowroot powder, things like that. And this is how I do this thing. All right, thunder powder. Let's see. And I'm just putting a little chunk of wood down in case we get some, uh, you know, inevitable craft man going to spill melt the metal all over the place. And so I don't get some little burn marks up in my desk. So I got me a spoon. Craft man, that's a ladle. I'm just going to use one of these little turtles, you know. And I guess what we're going to try to do is just take that torch and go like that with it. And then just dump the melt the metal up into the mold. Let's see, so I'm gonna be about right there. Let me set my focus right, right about there. I'm trying to do this uh, two handed over here. Let's see. about to drop everything all right let's point the camera down let's get this thing look how shaky craft man craft man you need to take you some magnesium or something let's see all right uh oh Well, we may be finna have to figure out something else out, y'all. All right, what y'all think this is going to look like? One thing I would say before I take this out, uh, 
In previous episode, I have used a laser thermometer to check my heat because there is differences in this, you know, uh, it could be 400 some odd degrees, it could be 500, 600 some odd degrees, you know what I'm saying? There's a good chance I might have got it almost too hot, but enough of that, let's just see. That's interesting. I mean, that's not too terrible. I just wonder why, uh, see that? Now my hypothesis is that um, I know if you pour melted metal into something that's got a lot of moisture in it, that could cause steam and could cause bubbling and things like that. But I noticed that it did not break the mold apart like that. The cleanest result I could get doing this con would be to use that mold max 60. But I just wanted to try some alternatives, you know, and see what would happen. I said, what if I tried this mold star 16 fast? because that stuff is fast right there. And from what I understand, it is rated for up to 450 degrees. In addition, that will capture the detail more sharper, more fine. I may be in this little container that I'm going to put the corn down in, and that just came from a cup. And we're gonna take a little zephyr gap and just put that on there like that right there. And come in with this and try to in the meantime, let's go ahead and mix up our silicone. And I'm using a popsicle stick for this right though. Shout out to my friend Pop if you're watching this. Man, what you doing with this? Well, trying to make sure that we get silicone down up into that eyeball little area right there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We're gonna let that cure. All right, so this is fully cured, and we're going to just open that on up and see. See what we got. That looks pretty good right there. So, we're going to powder these things up and let's pour some metal. I guess we're going to have to use this other turtle, even though I did make him a little putty helmet like that right there. We could just go on ahead and melt up this other one right there too. So, I found my little uh, thermometer. The mold star 15 right there. It does say that, you know, 450 degrees max. So we're going to try to keep it to that. Barbecue is 77.7 .7 degrees. That's pretty good. So, you know, 
I have heard pros and cons to tapping it like that right there. Some people say that you tap it, it helps it to distribute. Some people say that you don't need to tap it because it can mess up that uh, film and mess your mold up. But, you know, we'll see what happens. We're going to let that cool off. All right. I was able to get a passable uh, cast with the mold putty. Now, that's a little problem area right there. Getting the uh, middle to go down in between that little space right there for the eye. It's got a little bit of a, uh, see that? It ain't 100%, but the way it turned out, I actually really like it like this. So, see what I can do with this thing. Polish it up. I started out with me some fairly coarse grit. Then I moved to me about a, a 220 grit sanding sponge. And then uh, try me some little steel wool, see how that looks. You know, just try some different things. To help accentuate some of the little corner little details, I'm going to use this right here. Honest. All right. And so I tried to brush it towards the little crevice creases. I went and hit that with the little heat gun to kind of set that in there. And then alternately you can just wait on it to dry. So what I usually try to simulate when I do these kinds of things is that, you know, let's pretend like they was a uh, Thundercast be going to uh, doing some shopping and things. They be using their car every day. And it uh, gets a lot of handling, a lot of grime and dirt things builds up on it. And usually that's going to collect in the way. That's right. The crevice increases. Sis. And so, that's what we're going for with that. Now you could make you a two-part mold out of one of these and have you a back side that comes in and has something on it. But for today, you know, I just wanted to do that right there. So in summary, it looks like you can make you a, a pewter mold using, uh, you know, silicone and mold putty, which also is silicone, but that's the part of silicone. I would say that if you're going for sharper details and things, try to use your part of silicone. Uh, if you want a really very uh, heat intensive uh, mold material, look at Mold Max 60. But that right there, just a mold style 16 fast. It cures in 30 minutes is how come I use it today because we wanted to do things fast. That cures 30 minutes, that cures 30 minutes. Snap. I hope y'all enjoyed that. If you get the hanker to play with uh, melted metal and uh, things like that, then please uh, be careful and have someone supervise you and just, you know, it don't hurt to be safe, right? All right, try to lift somebody up, say something good about their shoes, different things, all kind of creative ways that you can do things to boost somebody, encourage them, make them feel good about themselves, you know. I love y'all and keep steady crap. I was supposed to mention people to uh, click on the bell, but I forgot the uh, subscriptions thing. Next video. I need to do that next video. Don't let me forget. All right. It's rolling.